Thank you and welcome everybody. It's good to be here. Uh, Senator Ortiz Pino and I'm sure our House colleagues may have to run. Um, we're actually in judiciary right now, so I'm playing hooky. So if, if there's a reason why, if I miss a key vote, please, I hope it won't be used in a campaign ad at some point. Um, so, so anyway, <laughs> so it's really good to be here. I, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the, there is a choice. And as Kelly uh, alluded to, what we have essentially are down to is a pretty clear choice. And um, that is, do we continue to invest in the vital, basic community services that we've all come to expect and have a right to in government? And we're not talking about uh, everything under the sun. We're talking about the basics here, public safety, education for our kids, and some form of health care, at least for those folks who we all believe uh, have some right to, pe to, be, uh, to have ac accessible health care. Uh, we can debate whether or not everybody under the sun should, and I think some of us believe that, but that's not the question. The question is really seniors, folks with disabilities, kids, especially those who have some economic challenges. So what, <clears throat> what is the alternative to really take, making the hard choice and having the will really to say to uh, multi-state corporations, out-of-state corporations, it's time that you stepped up to the plate and given back some of the several hundred million uh, some would, say, would put the number at over a billion dollars in exemptions, rebates, subsidies that we currently give. Not all of them are, are uh, crazy or misguided. Some of them, frankly, have worked very well. Uh, but most of them have not been reviewed in years. So the choice there is continue this sort of uh, pretty, pretty much open, un, uh, unoverseen subsidy of multiple industries or try to in invest in these basic services. Education, early childhood, health care, public safety. Now it seems like um, it seems like everyone should agree that um, all else being equal, that the government should do some basic things. Um, and there have been cuts. Uh, nobody here is asking for an expansion of the education budget. Nobody's asking for an expansion of the Medicaid budget. What we're asking for is after seven or eight hundred million. Um, in cuts over the last couple of years, which is what we've gone through in education and in healthcare, uh, closer to 800 million. Some, someone, depending on how you count it, would put it closer to a billion dollars in terms of, of who's had to absorb those costs. Um, there comes a point when we really have to ask ourselves, can we continue to cut? Can we continue to increase class sizes? Can we deny care for folks with disabilities and, and chronic healthcare conditions? Can we continue to de deny as we have eligibility for child care assistance um, or for programs that we know work that are very smart investments? We know for a fact that for every dollar we invest in the first five years, and this is science, this is track, these are there are multiple longitudinal studies that we know that for every dollar we invest in early childhood in those first five years, that we get a $10 return on investment. I don't know what kind of returns most people get on their 401ks, but that's a really incredible rate of return. And this is not some uh, number that was pulled out of the air. This is a number that's really a consensus number by very credible economists, um, including James Heckman at, at the Chicago School, not exactly the bastion of, of, uh, of liberalism there. Um, but we do know that if we invest this. So the choice is clear. Do we continue to subsidize Industries that may or may not be creating these jobs, these mythical jobs that we were promised, or do we do what we're supposed to do as a community, provide the basic services, education, health care, public safety, and we can't cut them anymore. Team two, Paul Gessing. <laughs> 